I recently came back from a mission to Japan to find a watch to buy. Well, I actually ended up with more than one, so stay tuned to see what I bought. And although this seems like an easy task, bear in mind that there are a ton of watches to choose from in Japan. Seiko, Grand Seiko, Citizen, Casio, Orient, Corona Tokyo, Kuo, Minase, and a whole lot more. So I've got a tip or two for shopping watches in Japan. Let's first take a look at some places to buy watches. Bic Camera. Now, as the name suggests, the Bic Camera store sells more than just cameras and electronics. At the very top level, they have a floor dedicated to just watches. This is my first time going here, and let me just say, I was in JDM watch heaven. They had every JDM watch brand you can think of, including, yep, Grand Seiko. So naturally, I let my emotions guide me and headed straight to the Grand Seiko section. Now, I've never owned a Grand Seiko before, but I really want to own one. Could this trip mark my first Grand Seiko to enter into the collection? Prior to coming over to Japan, I had a few Grand Seikos in mind, one of which happens to be in this case, the Sky Blue GMT reference SBGM253. Now, keep in mind, I'm coming from the US and the exchange rates at the moment are in our favor against the yen. And coupled with tax-free shopping and an additional 5% promo discount from BitCamera, you're saving quite a bit of money versus buying one brand new in the States. So I decided to keep moving along and take a look at other brands in the store. And of course, I landed on three watches, all from Seiko. I mean, what can I say? Seiko is king. Now three Seikos caught my eye. The classic but polarizing Seiko Tuna, a chronograph under the spirit line, and the Seiko 5 Field GMT that everyone is raving about. And I could see why. I've always wanted to own a Tuna, but even with the discounts, the price wouldn't be too great for picking up. So that leaves the Field GMT and the Seiko Spirit Chronograph in this icy blue dial that looks very reminiscent of a Platinum Rolex Daytona. Oh, and did I mention that this thing can be picked up here for roughly 90 bucks? Yeah, I love Japan. I promise, this isn't a video all about Seiko. But when in Japan, you have to visit their flagship Seiko store in concept they call Seiko Dream Square. The building consists of several levels, each highlighting different collections such as their Prospects line, Presage, and King Seiko to name a few. To be honest, it was cool and all, but I didn't find anything worthy of picking up. But it was cool to see a whole entire building filled with Seikos in their flagship store. So unless they're selling these vintage divers, I have no interest in buying anything here but definitely worth the visit if you're there. There's that Seiko Tuna again. Is this a sign to pick one up? Pro tip, if visiting in the wintertime, please be prepared to be blasted with heaters on full blast in every store you walk into. I was sweating bullets in every store I was in. If there is one Grand Seiko boutique in the entire world to buy a Grand Seiko, it's going to be at their flagship store in Ginza in their famous Wacko building. And what can I say? It was like being a kid in a candy store or for any of you who had the pleasure of going to Disneyland as a kid, it felt just like that. Except instead of buying an expensive ticket and an overpriced churro, you get the pleasure of purchasing a watch for thousands of dollars and wearing it on your wrist to stare at. Weird how our sense of joy changes as we get older, right? Anyways, this place had everything from most of what you see on Grand Seiko's catalog to limited edition models you can only get in that store. And even watches from their Creator line that I'll never be able to afford. They basically had everything, and also everything that I didn't want. Which means, sadly, maybe I'm not much of a fan of Grand Seiko as I thought it would be. Or maybe perhaps there isn't a Grand Seiko for me at the moment. And this thought actually makes me sad. It was at this moment where my hunt for Grand Seiko ended. So, until next time, Grand Seiko. I bid you farewell. But that doesn't mean my hunt for watches is over. Now, remember those three Seikos I had my eyes on? I went back to consider those one last time. Of course it is. So it's between the Tuna and Spirit Chrono. I didn't have to think much about the Spirit Chrono, so that's going in the bag for sure. The Tuna on the other hand, I had to think long and hard about this one. But in the end, I passed. Especially with the current production model that includes the Prospects logo, I couldn't pull the trigger on this one. Unless a vintage one comes up later in this trip, maybe I'll consider it again. 
This is called foreshadowing. Ever since Corona Tokyo opened up their Aoyama salon in Tokyo, I knew one day I had to visit it. I mean, how often do you get to look at every single watch from an independent watch company in one place? Now you can't really buy anything here as Corona Tokyo has their own ways of releasing their watches online. Actually, at one point you could buy these exclusive Urushi lacquer dial pieces, but of course I came a few weeks too late before the last one was sold. Regardless, I encourage all of you to at least visit the salon, as it's a great place to lounge around and take a look at their whole entire catalog. Shortly before my visit, Corona Tokyo just released their new set of 34mm watches they call the Caligra. And I was super excited that they had them there on display to handle. The Mother of Pearl dial variant was the version I was super excited to see, and unfortunately, they were only accepting pre-orders for these watches, or else I would have bought them right on the spot. The dial is a lot more dynamic in person, and you can really notice the detailing that went into the custom typeface seen through the Brigade numerals designed from the ground up by Hajime Asoka, the man behind this elusive brand. For those lucky ones that were able to secure this piece, you are all in for a treat with this piece, and I'm truly excited for you to experience it for the first time, just like I did. I've always been curious about the Chronograph 1, which in my opinion is a fine example of symmetry in an Art Deco design that is very unique to Hajime Asoka's design philosophy. Now, this watch unfortunately is sold out and forever will be. Which is sad, but I'm glad I got in some wrist time with the Chronograph. It basically never left my wrist the last few minutes I was there. And you know what? If that's the most time I'm ever going to get with that Chronograph, then that's okay. When doing your research on where to look for watches in Tokyo, this place always pops up somewhere in a listicle. And to be honest, from what I've read, I was terrified to visit. I mean, I was already overwhelmed with the amount of choices I came across. And to be there on Econo Broadway, where five levels in the building exists, and what seemed to be every other store being a watch shop selling hundreds, if not thousands of watches from Timex's, all the way to independent watchmaker pieces like F.P. Jorn. Yes, I tend to get decision fatigue quite easily, and it didn't help that some of the shops were close to closing time, and I still wasn't 100% satisfied with my watch shopping in Japan. Aside from the stressors of being in Econo Broadway, it's pretty crazy to see how many people are shopping for watches. And they're not just tourists here. As a matter of fact, the majority seem to be locals actually buying things. So after getting lost in this maze, I think I might have found something. I found myself lost in this pretty massive shop called Jack Road and Betty. And they had everything from ultra luxury independent brands all the way to old vintage Japanese watches. And this particular section really got me excited. Out of everything in that section, the Citizen Bullhead caught my eye. It's basically the same watch seen in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but in a steel case rather than the gold one. It was a cool watch, but after getting it in hand, it needed quite a bit of work. The case wasn't in the best shape, the crystal was a bit too worn, and the operation of the pushers needed a little work. Luckily, my wife talked me out of it as I was getting a little antsy on picking something up. But in the end, we decided to move along. And that is when I came across this small shop called Samurai Joy. This one excited me even more than the last, as it had mostly vintage pieces. Once again, a wild tuna appears to haunt me. This one, however, is a neo-vintage JDM version under the Marine Master line predating the Prospects version series we see today. Now, was this my final calling to pick up a Seiko Tuna? I mean, I have already come across one on Big Camera, and even that one time visiting the Seiko Dream Square. Third time's a charm, right? That's it. Let's go home. It's been two hours. But I need to go to the restroom first. She's right. But everything is starting to close. So as I waited for my wife using the restroom, I began to reflect on my watch hunt and really thought about it. If I should continue with the journey or just end it right there, next to the bathroom. But just when I was about to throw on the towel, I took one last chance to take a look at one last door down the hallway from the restroom. And for some reason, I knew there was something special about this one. Unlike the last store we were in, this had nothing but vintage watches and really great pieces, 
ranging all the way from old Seikos that seem like museum pieces, sporty, dressy watches, and everything in between, all the way to Swiss pieces that were very well curated. And as if the watch gods were looking down on my poor soul, I found it. I found one of my vintage grails. This watch is known as the last of the great Japanese mechanical chronographs to be created. Right at the start of the quartz crisis, which ultimately forced many brands to focus their efforts on quartz technology. It came straight out of the 70s with its four design, featuring an octagonal case and pushers located at the 11 and one o'clock position. Citizen calls this the challenge timer, but us watch enthusiasts simply call it a bullhead. I've always wanted a bullhead, specifically this one from Seiko. But ever since Once Upon a Time in Hollywood featured a Citizen bullhead on the wrist of Brad Pitt's character, it got me researching a bit more into Citizen's offerings. That's when I discovered this octagonal case version, and since then, have been keeping an eye out for the right one. And everything about this one, from the original bracelet, original parts, and condition, ticked all the right boxes for me. At this point in my trip, I can probably say that I was already content with my two pickups. But... I'll be honest, while in Kyoto, I didn't have any more intention of looking for watches. But as one does on public transportation, you end up looking for watch shops around me. And I happen to be near this Japanese microbrand store, Knot. I first discovered Knot doing a bit of research while looking for Japanese watch brands prior to this trip and I came across their Urushi lacquer dial models, but sadly, they didn't have any of these on display. However, the store is beautifully designed, and notice that the watches that they do have in stock were really approachable to the new watch enthusiast, or even just the casual watch wearer, as the prices were fair and design suitable for a lot of tastes. They have several stores throughout Japan, so if you're near one, give it a shot. I completely forgot about a young brand that was born right in Kyoto. So I just had to give their showroom a quick visit that doubles as their headquarters. Like a lot of other watch enthusiasts that discovered Kuo, it was most likely through Instagram as it has caught a lot of our attention with their military field watch designs. And this being their modest headquarters, they had their whole entire collection laid out, along with all their straps you can couple your watch with when you pick it up in store. As this was my first time in Kyoto, I figured what better way to mark my first time here than with a domestically made watch, not only in Japan, but in Kyoto itself. And they truly do assemble their watches right there in their headquarters. I asked to use the restroom before I left, and they kindly let me go behind the curtains where they literally have several watch techs assembling the watches by hand, which was a pretty cool sight to see. I was wondering why I had to wait around 15 minutes for my watch that I decided to pick up, which came out to be, This was their model that really put Kuo on my radar. Although it may look like any other simple three-hand watch, taking a closer look in hand, it is rugged, yet elegant with its high-polished case and creamy dial in a compact 35mm case. Now, there is a 38mm case version, which may be a little bit more suitable for enthusiasts who prefer a larger case, but to me, the 35mm version gives more true vintage British military watch vibes that I believe the founder Kenji Uchimura was going for. After all, he drew inspiration for Kuo as a student during his time in London browsing for antique watches. There are upgrades to the dial and crystal you can opt for, but I chose to go with their base model on this khaki leather strap with stitching detail that I think pairs perfectly. As of filming, they only have one location where they operate, assemble and sell their watches, but told me that they'll soon be opening a dedicated store. So I highly encourage all of you to give them a visit whenever you're in Kyoto. I apologize as this is starting to become a long-winded video. So here's a quick rundown on more tips. Make a wish list of watches you'd like to see or buy. Just remember there are more than just JDM watches to look at in Japan. Map out where you'd like to hit up. Ginza for luxury and Grand Seiko, Nakano Broadway for secondhand, and Big Camera for everything else. Take advantage of it. 
Take advantage of tax-free shopping and discounts. Look for department store and big camera coupons and know your price. Get an idea of watch prices before heading to Japan. Lastly, just remember to enjoy the hunt. You're in the mecca of Japanese watchmaking, so just soak it all in. And just come to peace that you won't be able to see everything you might want to see on your list. And that's completely okay. There's always next time. And until next time, I'm Chris, this channel's Cookie Puzzle, and hope you snag your very own grill in Japan.